going to use this proposition and prove that the set of prime numbers is actually infinite set. So theorem. the set of prime numbers is infinite. Very good. So suppose not, suppose it's not infinite. Suppose you have finite numbers of prime numbers, proof by contradiction. Suppose not, and we have a finite numbers of primes. Like what? Like two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and it stops at a prime number like P. Okay. This is the largest prime number that we have. Very good. So since you have some numbers, their multiplication is another number. Am I right? From algebra. So let us write this down here. Since we have some numbers, their product or multiplication is another number. So I can multiply two by three, by five, by seven, and by p, and create a new number. This is a number. And remember that I told you I'm going to follow this proposition. I'm going to add one to it and call it n. Very good. So obviously n is larger than one. So n is larger than one. That was the whole point that we wanted to do. Since n is larger than one, well, you can find a prime number that divides n. It's a theorem that we proved. Since n is larger than one, we can find a prime number like q that q divides n. Okay, so far so good. Q is a prime number and it must be equal to one of these prime numbers. We only have finite numbers of prime numbers. Since we have finite numbers of prime numbers, two, three, five, seven, and P. So Q must be one of them. So Q definitely divides the multiplication, two times three times five times seven times p. What happened? Q divides their multiplication, which we call, for example, a, and Q divides the addition by one. Am I right? So this is your A, and this is your A plus one. So Q divides A, and Q divides A plus one. But from proposition, we know that 
it cannot be true. But it contradicts the previous proposition. So it is false. We reach to a contradiction. It means that our theorem is true. So our statement is 